Yo, what's up guys, so today we are gonna see, what if, Naruto got hair and what Korra and Asami, part 1, hope you'll enjoy this video, so before we start please subscribe to our channel, and like this video. So let's get into the video. Do you understand your mission, Naruto? The imposingly tall figure asks with a blood red haired youth standing before him with royal purple eyes getting a nod. I'm being reincarnated to assist the possible millionth reincarnation of the person who took my role after I defeated Madara and the Jubi. I won't have my chakra, nor my Rinnegan, chakra chains, or any of my to fall back on, but my bending which due to humanity losing the use of chakra after my departure, have evolved into using an element called Kai, Naruto surmise getting a nod from the deity in front of him. It's been a couple hundred years since Naruto Uzumaki Namika's Senju Uchiha has defeated Madara and the Jubi with the assistance of Kurama and his brothers and sisters who merged with him. To prevent humanity from repeating the process of bloodshed and hate Naruto like his ancestor before him gave chakra. Naruto took it away with him, as he vanished from the world with him leaving, as the last Biju in existence. That is correct Sachi-kun. You are to help Kori in her quest to stop several threats from destroying the balance, and Republic City the figure said, reducing in size becoming more curved and slender, as her long vibrant red hair became obvious with her pristine white obi and kimono. Okay I get that mom, but you never told me what kind of threat. Who is it or what is it I have to help her with? Naruto asked with curiosity, as he stood in front of his mother who giggled into her hand. Well besides herself with her hot temper, and going at something half-cocked. You are to help me fight against a man who is trying to bring an end to benders, and a man who is trying to end the avatar cycle, and bring about the dark spirit she said, getting a nod from him showing him several images. So when am I supposed to go? Today. Next week. He asked not liking the grin on her face. More like now she said noticing him fade from existence. What? Naruto said vanishing from existence, as Kashina saw one last image of Naruto up in her realm with Kor, one other woman, and his new mother. But look Sachi she said to the space her son once stood. Hold on Miss Beifong I can see the head now a woman sat in front of a screaming woman who had a vice grip on her husband's hand. If you shimmer next time we have children you carrying the little bastard for 9 months. She roared in agony, as her husband was frothing at the mouth, unable to say anything because her other hand was gripping his balls through his clothes getting a pop. He thought in excruciating pain there goes the left one gasping for breath he said weakly, it's okay sweetie just a little more. Cutting him off she said gripping tighter f you, you waterbending asshole you did this to me, and if I weren't in such excruciating pain I'd shove a metal pole the size of my mom's statue up your ass, and leave you there for all of Republic City to see. Alright Lin give me one more good strong push the nurse said guiding the woman while silently sympathizing with the agonizing husband, since this isn't the first, or will it be the last time she'll hear threats like that towards the husband, especially from the mouths of earth bending women. She cried when a second softer cry was heard, as the nurse clipped the umbilical cord, handing the bundle to her after she collapsed on the bed. Congratulations Lin, Shimmer, it's a beautiful baby boy she said, showing the sleeping boy with whisker marks, and black hair with grey streaks. Look at him, he's so beautiful isn't he Shimmer? Lin said getting a nod from her husband brushing a hand through his own grey hair. But he is Lin. Though just from looking at him he's going to be a mirror image of you if you were boy or spears forbid your mother he said with a shudder. Toph Beifong was an intimidating woman who could make the most frightening figures seem tame in comparison when faced with her legendary anger. What should we name him? He doesn't strike me as a stable person like earthbender Shimura said, getting a nod from Lin who could tell by looking at him he wouldn't be like most earthbenders. he possibly be a hectic unrelenting force like a whirlpool that's it. Shimura said in excitement. What? And please ease up on the yelling he's sleeping she said tiredly getting a nervous chuckle from the man as he heard the underlying threat. The name will pull her Naruto how what do you think? He said looking at his son with a smile. Lin contemplating, as she looked at her son nodded Naruto Naruto Beifong, it has a nice ring too doesn't it? He nodded kissing his wife of a year, as they sat in silence watching their newborn son sleep when the door opened showing a slightly aged Toph Beifong wearing her police uniform, as Katara came in with her children Bumi, Tenzin with his wife, and Kaya, as Kaya was gushing over little Naruto. Hey squirt waterboy what you name this squishy guy? Her mother asked looking at her daughter. Naruto after the whirlpool it was Shimura's idea Lin said getting a nod from Shimura, who handed their son to Toph who instantly turned to mush holding Naruto in her arms. He's going to be a heartbreaker in the future Lin I can see it, Katara said checking him over seeing he was perfectly healthy. I can safely say he'll get his looks from his mom, and personality too Toph said getting a nod from the others. And me? Shimura asked, as the others stared at him trying to think of what his, and Lin's son would get from him. Your ramen addictions. Tenzin said with a nod from the others, while said airbender got a glare from the waterbender. I'll crush any girl who comes near my son without a moment's hesitation, Lin said getting a laugh from the gathered party. I feel he's going to have an important role to play in the future Kaya said, making the others raise an eyebrow. What makes you say that? Lin asked, as the others were curious, as well. 
call it a hunch if you want, but it's the energy I feel coming from him that leads me to believe he'll be a greater water bender than you mom, and an even greater earth bender than you Toph Kai explained, getting a shrug from the head of the metal bending police force. Wouldn't doubt the Kai coming from him is immense. Why if I didn't believe it I'd say he was the next avatar, but it's too soon for that, Toph said a little sad since Song passed away a couple of years ago. Everyone continued talking, and gushing over Naruto until a loud snore broke up the noise making them see Lin asleep holding Naruto. Let's get out of here. All that must have wore her out, Katara said getting a positive from the others, as they crept out of the room, missing the tattoo of a dragon form from his wrist up to his arm, slightly coming over his right shoulder blade. Six years later. Come on Naruto get into your horse stance. Ta said to her grandson, as they stood in the Beifong home's vast backyard, and she was instructing him in the arts of earth bending with her daughter watching right behind her next to Kaya. It's been six years since his birth, and five years since Shimura's death, as an accident when one of the many gangs attacked, and killed him while he was in the middle of a job, but he wouldn't go down without swinging. He used his water bending to collapse the pipes around them, causing the house's structure to fall around them, catching some of the triple threats weakening them, while the rest of the triple threats were under the anger of the recently promoted Captain Lin for attacking her, and killing her husband, and the father of her child who was an honest natural at water bending. And was a prodigy of earth bending. Now mudslinger she said with a grin much to his ire. Granny Toph has been calling him either that or fish cake for, as long, as he could remember, and she wouldn't quit, until she said he was either a, stronger than her or b, change his name to something else, and he's sure, as hell wasn't going to do either. I honestly wish you'd stop calling me that Naruto remarked quietly under his breath drawing a smirk from the woman. What was that fish cake? You want double the training today. No problem anything for my cute little grandson. Toph said hearing him perfectly just like his mother, and godmother Kaya, who were both laughing although Naruto didn't necessarily mind, since this was helping him gain better control over his control over earth like Kaya. And Katara has him work with his control over water, since the time he pulled water from the air around him when he was three. Again he grumbled when she asked him what he said he responded yes Shifu Toph ready when you are. But now be prepared because I'm coming at you. Toph said, as she got in her stance wearing her training clothes consisting of shorts, and a shirt, while Naruto was wearing the same with a set of bandages around his eyes with his hair in a loose ponytail. Aren't you worried he might hurt himself Lin? I mean Toph seems to be working him a little harder than usual, even for their standard training, Kaya said, worried for her godson's safety, since the last time he went through this type of training, he came back with a dislocated shoulder, and a fractured ankle, and a minor concussion. It's fine Kaya I trust mom besides he's a tough boy, and you can't forget he tends to heal rather quickly, and he's made of stronger stuff than others, even for an earthbender she said speaking the truth every time he suffers serious injuries or even a cut, it tends to heal from the span of either a couple of seconds, or at the most a week, as sturdy, and dense, as steel. Yeah, but Kaya started when Naruto got blasted into the space between the two of them, before he charged back at her. I still can't help, but worry. I mean he is my only godson let alone any child I see, as a nephew, since Tenzin is too much of a chicken to tie the knot with being a poor girl, sometimes I feel my brother is leading her on she said, getting a knot from Lin. Yes I agree with you on that one. It's been some time since the two got together, and he hasn't even made a single move on her she said with a nod. Kaya you might want to put fish cake to bed kids all tuckered out, but I gotta admit he's getting better give him a few more years, and he may just be better than me Toph said, showing he did get a good show with a large bruise forming on her stomach flinching when Kaya touched it. Grabbing Naruto from her Kaya said seems you've got a few bruised ribs if not at least cracked. I swear he's going to surprise us even more. The two women nodded, as Lin held her son on her back while he slept exhausted from his training for the day, while in another part of the world, another interesting event was taking place. In the water tribe. You wanted us to see something. A man asked entering an igloo with two others, as a husband and wife stepped aside. It better be important otherwise this would have been a colossal waste of time, a second man said walking in behind the first with the third following close by, when they were greeted by a five-year-old girl, shooting a small burst of fire, causing the second man's shirt to catch fire before stomping her foot, making the three fall on their back, while water bending the small pool next to her at her feet. To douse the fire getting the three men wet. I'm the new avatar so you better deal with it. The little girl sat before stomping the ground sending them out the house. I wish you didn't have your friend watch her that one time she's become a lot like Han her mother said getting a chuckle from her father. I didn't necessarily think it was such a bad idea at the moment when Han offered some time ago he said in his defense getting a glare. And do you know another idea that isn't so bad in thought dear husband. She said a little too sweetly giving the man a bad feeling while their daughter stares with a questioning look. No my dear snowflake. He said fearfully. You will be sleeping in the living room tonight she said picking up her daughter ignoring her husband's whimpering. Say night night to daddy Cora her mother said getting a wide eyed look from the husband. Night daddy love you, Cora said sleepily getting a wave goodbye in return. Night sweetie love you too he said, as the door shut making him smack his forehead. 
Stupid Han I told you not to do anything like that in front of Kor, and you pulled that stunt, he grumbled under his breath lying on the floor near the fire staying warm. Sniffing he turned his back to the fire, as the lights cut off leaving only the dancing lights of the flames to act, as a source of light thinking stupid Han. Two year later. You want to learn what now? Lin asked sitting at the table with her son two years later, as she and her son attended the funeral of her mother who died in her sleep, she left Naruto her chunk of space earth which she fashioned as an armband. I want to learn Kai blocking he said causing his mother to raise an eyebrow her son had the promise to become not only a masterful earth bender that could rival the avatar when in the avatar state same for his water bending and the dreaded blood bending when he accidentally killed a man who broke into his childhood friend fiance Sami's home and killed her mother while he may not use his bending all too much unless necessary he is still joining the metal bending police when he's older. And why in the world would you want to learn something like that? She asked curiously to her it wasn't that bad an idea, and was an interesting prospect in case you couldn't bend anymore, it was something to fall back on, so you're not completely defenseless she even knows how, and is quite the professional at this style, although she doesn't use it. Well there isn't really much of a reason to use bending on the non-bender's mom. You and granny always told me, as the police we defend the community, and those who can't defend themselves. There are civilians who think we benders are taking advantage of them or make them feel like second class citizens, and try to revolt I want to learn, so I can stop the non-benders without causing them harm, and to calm their fears that we're using our power to repress them he explained, making a valid point. The non-benders of Republic City have come to feel like they're being repressed, as there aren't that many jobs for them, since the benders have the real jobs, and what jobs they do have aren't that glamorous in design nor they work under the benders. Surprise, and curious, she asked, and how do you know that young man? Shrugging he said mom, what do you think I do when I'm not in school or with a Sami? We've constantly heard of civilians talking about how we suppress them, or make them feel like they're second class, it helps that I'm well liked by both benders, and non-benders alike. She had to give him that one. Her son, while a troublemaker, made the pencil-pushing humdrum life of Republic City pleasant with his pranks. Besides, they never caused any harm, just to give the people a chuckle or two, and then there are his moments when he helps people who need it, like the orphanage the council refuses to help. He went down there, and not only used his own two hands to give the less fortunate a proper home, but he told the council off when they demanded he stop. Lin had to laugh at that one eight-year-old, telling the council of Republic City to piss off, and shove their demands up their tight asses. She wanted to be mad at him for his use of language, but he was doing what was right, and word spread about his various kind deeds. I suppose you make a fair point so you intend to use these lessons to not only stop the benders oppressing the people, but to get the people to realize that not all benders are, as bad, as they believe we are. She surmised getting a nod from her son impressed with his resolve. Looking at him sternly she said well I do know how to kai block from learning it, as a child if you're serious about this, I can help teach you, and Asami if she's interested, which might be useful to keep you in line son. He laughed with a roll of the I owe you a riot mom. You and Asami both have me pigeon squirrel toot, you with discipline, while Asami who oddly enough is persistent on me getting involved with another woman why I don't know, nor will I ever especially since I'm only 8. If there's one thing you should know about Asami's mother is that she was the one that wore the pants in the relationship, and was an odd woman with a lot of quirks, Lin said, not wanting to jumpstart her little boy's imagination of sex. You mean her sexual quirks? He asked getting a raised eyebrow from his mother. What? Me, and Asami found out a while ago when we were six playing hide, and seek in the house a shock that such a kind woman had such sadistic, and masochistic quirks, and interests, I just pray Asami doesn't turn out like her, he said with a shudder, not too thrilled on the thought of whips, and such. Lin said laughing well you can only hope so Naruto because her mother ended up exactly like her mother, before her odds aren't looking too well for you or any woman that tags along with you, and Asami for that matter. Letting his head hit the table he said, you're kidding. Receiving a negative he groaned, as she sipped on her coffee patting him on the head thinking oh son, you have no idea what type of torture you're getting yourself into. So how are things in the academy? Are you doing well in your studies? She was curious about his grades in the metal benders police academy. It was for Earthbenders to participate in the class to earn their position in the force. Lifting his head he said flatly mom you drilled every bit of important information into my head since I first attended last year. Frankly compared to learning from you it's all rather dull learning something that you already know. True, but the teachers tell me you tend to sleep during the classes. I know the lectures are boring, but you have to at least pretend to care she said getting a nod. I know, but I can't help it. My grades are at the top, and I'm the best in the practices, and stuff, but just listening to the teacher drone on monotonously is a real pain. I mean I would rather watch paint dry on a drywall than listen to someone talk with zero emotion or effort to keep your attention he explained. She couldn't fault him for being the same when she was in the academy, so she said alright, but can you at least promise to try, and not fall asleep during the lectures. I don't want to deal with the teachers or principal calling me to say my son fell asleep again. 
He nodded getting a small smile from his mother a treat that was rare in itself, something he enjoyed immensely, since she only smiled on rare occasions. Now you're about to be late to meet Asami at her school, since you didn't have classes today, she said, getting a wide-eyed look from her son which she laughed at. I forgot. I'm not even dressed why didn't you tell me sooner? He exclaimed running to his room, as she shrugged. Watching him run around she said I thought you were just going to meet her dressed, as you were. Besides you promised Asami to meet her I didn't think you'd need me to remind you of your own obligations. A oh man last time I was late she gave me the silent treatment for a week, he groaned running out the making a whipping sound, Naruto shouted out the door I heard that. You were supposed to. She responded with a chuckle, as the door slammed shut. At Asami's school. He's late again Asami groaned sitting on a bench wearing her uniform comprised of a black shirt with a red skirt, and shoes with her bag next to her. You think he'd remember that normal schools end at 3 in the afternoon by now one of her friends said, getting a nod from her. Yes, but he's always been a bit of a scatterbrain since I could remember it's one of the things I love about him, she said with a sigh, waiting for her fiancé to arrive for the last 10 minutes. Huff huff sorry I'm not too late am I? He asked, as her friends quickly ran making him sweat, because whenever she's angry those two run like badger moles after a fresh meal. Oh not really except I've been sitting here like a lonely girl for 10 minutes. What took you? She said sternly making him cower. I had overslept this morning since I didn't have classes at the academy today, and when I made a late breakfast with mom, since she didn't have to work till later we started talking when I just learned you got out he explained, getting a blank stare from his future wife. You stopped by the ramen stand on the way here didn't you? She stated making him straighten up. What do you mean I ran from my house to here I couldn't have the chance to get any he said lamely before she plucked a fish cake off his cheek, knowing he was officially screwed. And do tell me oh sweet future husband of mine what this is on your cheek. She said blandly making him drop his hat realizing he was caught. Nothing to say for yourself. She said getting a shake of the hat while the couple's passing by, had to admit the sight was rather cute, seeing the two act like a married couple already, while the men were sympathetic towards him, knowing what it's like to get your hand caught in the cookie jar. You know what this means don't you sweetie? She asked getting a nod from him, as he picked up her bag. Carry me home please she asked kindly making him pick her up princess style, as they walked off, as the women cooed. Yes mistress he said with a bit of humor in his voice, making the women envious that she got such a prize wishing their boyfriend's husbands would do such things for them. Asami's room. A little lower she moaned, as Naruto sat on her hips massaging her back, as Naruto told her of his conversation with his mother. So Lin wants to teach me, and Yukai blocking, as a form of self-defense, so I wouldn't be completely defenseless against Bender she said, getting a positive from Naruto. Well in her words so you can keep me in line, but yes that too he said when she flipped them over, as he laid on his back with her wrapping her arms around his waist. I don't need to learn how to keep you in check buddy, but it would be useful to know against benders, and non-benders she said with her head resting on his chest. Sitting up she said, but why do you want to learn it, Mr. Water Earth Bender Extraordinaire? Well I don't see use for using my bending on non-benders, and they already believe benders are treating them like second class citizens. I want to try and change their opinion if not at least slightly he said, giving the same reason he did for his mother. She shrugged laying back down on top of him asking can you stay here for a while longer until it's time for you to go. I had a tough time at school and I just want to be around you. He patted her back giving a positive as she soon fell asleep with him combing his hand through her hair since her fear was prominent since her mother's death, thinking he died too, which he assured her wasn't going to happen not anytime soon. Brushing her hair he said quietly I'm not going anywhere Asami no need to worry. Hearing this she sighed softly before completely drifting off to sleep with a smile, as he soon joined her. Hey chief finished that report, as you requested a now 17 year old Naruto said, now standing at an impressive 5'9", wearing the metal bending force uniform with bronze lining, walking into the chief's office with a stack of papers in hand. His whisker marks had become more defined with his hair coming down to his shoulders in a spiky mess, with it coming slightly over his eyes with his steel grey eyes shining. Thank you, Naruto, you heard that you took down the triple threats today without any trouble. His mother Lin asked leading the force getting a negative from her pride and joy as he sat on the corner of her desk. Not in the slightest really if anything they were too easy. Although I heard a transmission from the radio about Amon the guy seems to really know how to get people practically every non-bender has a ear out for him, he said with a sigh, which she could understand it's been a few years since this masked man came out and started preaching about the evils of benders and their oppression. Naruto does what he can to appease the masses, but what things are getting, and Republic City could expect a revolt at the rate he's going, and her son's efforts can only do so much with this happening, with him being the only- We can only do so much son you know that if only we could find this Amon to begin with for starters or even a hint of who he is, Lin said with a heavy sigh, pinching the bridge of her nose in irritation. All we can do is what we have been, and hope we find something out, anything would greatly be useful to be honest, Naruto said getting a nod, as she pushed her papers to the side, giving her undivided attention to her only child. 
So Naruto, what are you making for dinner tonight? Lin asked getting a blank expression from her son, knowing she always tried to get him to cook after that time she came home exhausted to see him at the stove, preparing a complete meal that wasn't burnt or raw, and tasted like it came from a high class restaurant, and fell in love with his cooking instantly, as did Asami much to his embarrassment. I've spoiled you, and Asami both with my cooking you know that, he said getting a snort. That a problem son. A man that knows how to cook or clean up after himself or dress like he has sense are all fine catches. And you're all three your catch son appreciate that because I know Asami does she said with a grin, making him blush getting a chuckle to rise from her throat. But so, but really what's for dinner? She asked with a serious expression making him chuckle. Well I've pretty much cooked everything at least once this month, so sea salt ramen I suppose or Maizo Naruto said getting a dreamy expression from her making him chuckle, knowing one thing she adopted from her late husband was his addiction to ramen, and while she and Naruto don't eat it on a daily basis they did so on a bi-weekly basis, but she had her way if Naruto didn't say if he was cooking, he was only doing it twice a week for a week each month. Oh sounds good to me she said getting a snort from her son, sending her an incredulous look making her chuckle. Of course that sounds good to you mom. Although I feel I may have to bend that rule for this week for some reason Naruto said, as an afterthought getting a raised eyebrow. Why do you say that Naruto? She asked getting a shrug, as Naruto contemplated before standing up stretching. Don't know, but I feel like Republic City is going to be pretty interesting in the coming week, Naruto said before walking out of her office, after giving her a hug. I got a small bit of paperwork to do, and I'll be finished soon, Naruto said, as he walked out the door making her sigh with a small smile. And make it on time to pick up Asami. She said making him fumble out the door shooting her glare seeing her late husband and her son doing the same when her mother was in charge, as she chuckled. Sometime later. Man I gotta thank Asami for this gift again this thing kicks. Naruto sat driving his motorcycle down the street seeing Asami just walk out of the school, as he pulled to a stop, as she walked out growing over the 8 years, looking like a younger version of her late mother wearing a pair of pants. And shoes with a black jacket that had her family's company logo on the back in red with light lipstick, and eyeshadow on. Hey love, how was the lecture? He said pulling out a spare helmet for her, as she smiled kissing his cheek sitting behind him wrapping her arms around his waist, as she got behind him driving off. It was so dull. I mean you think being a teacher or at least an instructor would be interesting, but it really isn't she said getting a laugh from her husband, after they reached the age of consent before she pinched his cheek. It isn't funny. I almost fell asleep from my own lecture you know. I would like it if you'd come to the next one I have, and talk about your time on the floor she said, repositioning her arms so they were on his chest. Well I don't really mind, but wouldn't my mom be a better speaker than I am? She is the chief he said before making a turn through the streets. Well I do agree you know Lin isn't going to go along with it. It's just not a thing to do public speaking. Do you remember the press conference last year? She said making him nod while his mom did do the public speaking, she was rather curt and short with everyone while he filled everyone's questions and answered to the best of his abilities. I guess you're right he said, as they continued their drive quietly before Sami picked up on his silence. You okay she asked getting a sigh. I honestly can't put my finger on it, but I just feel like something's going to happen sometime in the week something that will make her public city a little more hectic, he said before she messed herself against him. What do you mean? She asked resting her chin on his shoulder. I mean since Amon came around things have already gotten tense around here, and if it's not Amon, then it's Councilman Tarlock. I just can't shake the feeling that the universe hasn't completely thrown its hand yet he said, getting a nod from Asami, since Tarlock has been trying to get hold of Naruto for publicity and raise his grip on Republic City for some time, due to the respect he's gained from the populace, which Naruto shot down at every attempt made despite the various incentives he made. Well let's head to my house, and I'll do something special to help get your mind off that nasty feeling you're getting with a better one, she purred making him shiver hearing the lust in her voice, while speeding up reaching her home. Removing him from her mouth, she licked her lips with a satisfied grin before kissing his cheek, saying that was satisfying. I'd prefer if we could continue, but I highly doubt Lin would be thrilled to know her son was late coming home, because he was getting a bit of nicky in after last time. He had to suppress a shudder remembering when the two first celebrated their relationship it lasted into the evening way past, when Naruto was supposed to be home when they were interrogated by his mom and her dad, it was even more embarrassing because they were right outside Asami's door when they walked out. Let's just say the threat Lin gave wasn't one they wanted to call her bluff on, and they've been trying to have as much time together as possible, while being sure to keep within the time frame, so Lin didn't follow through with her threats. Pulling their clothes back on he sighed kissing her on the lips, saying I'll see you soon love. Nodding, as she pulled her arms around his neck before kissing him again, as said I know you do know eventually we'll have to get our own place right. He nodded with a smile, as he kissed her one last time, as he put his uniform back on before walking out the house, as she sighed watching him from her window. 
I wonder if there's any good multi-bedroom homes here for a decent price. She thought watching him fade from her vision before plopping back down on the bed holding the pillow her husband's head laid onto her chest before falling asleep. Water tribe white lotus training fields. Dodging a blast of fire a dark skinned girl wearing red armor kicked a stream of fire at one of her opponents launching him back. As she landed she looked to the left seeing two more as both sent a stream of fire at her which she dispersed. One sent another stream before charging, as he continued his assault followed by the other, as he flanked right only for her to dodge, and snuff out another flame, before she met the main attacker's charge who jumped in the air, making her go for a forward roll, letting her heel connect to his foot, making him fall to the ground behind her, as the other came in front of her. Attacking together one charged at her from behind, while the other sent two jets of fire out at her, which she repelled by kicking the first man back, and snuffing out the flames before sending out her own, knocking him back before turning in time to block an attack from the previously downed man, before the two started to attack her from both sides. With the overlookers. She's improved greatly over the course of her training, an elderly woman said watching, as one of the fighters was sent onto the roof of where they were standing. A portly man snorted saying haughtily she may be strong, but she still lacks restraint. Watching the girl, and the man charge he created a constant stream of fire which the girl charged into before coming out the other end unscathed, surprising the man before using his shoulders, as a springboard, and launched herself into the air send a last attack, effectively rendering him unable to continue. Woohoo! Who's your girl? They heard her say in triumph while they remained stoic making her side before coming over removing her helmet, showing her dark brown hair, which was in a high ponytail with two blue bands holding her bangs. What's with all the doom, and gloom people we should be celebrating I've got three elements down, and one left to master she said her crystal blue eyes shining with mirth before a man wearing red robes said. You're getting ahead of yourself Cora, as usual he said getting her attention, as she stared at him in curiosity. What do you mean? She asked not understanding, as he sighed. We have still yet to decide if you pass your firebending test, yet you know he said getting a sigh from the rebellious 17 year old, as the man next to him added. Ever since you were a little girl Cora you've excelled at the physical side of bending, but you've continued to ignore the spiritual side of it he said, as Cora had a bored expression on her face, as he continued. The avatar must both to properly do their job Cora he said getting a sigh from the girl, letting her shoulders sag. I it's not that I've ignored it, it's just that it doesn't come as easily to me like the others did. But that's why I should start training with Tenzin immediately he's leaking spiritual enlightenment, she said, trying to defend her case, as the others looked to the elderly woman, as the same man said. And what do you believe Master Katara do you believe she's ready? He asked getting a nod from the elderly woman. Yes if anyone can teach her what she needs to learn it's Tenzin for sure she said, as the others relented, as they permitted her to begin her airbending training. Yes finally haha. She said grinning before looking at the others before coughing into her hand correcting herself. I mean thank you all so much for believing in me she said smiling before running off waving Katara goodbye, as the elderly woman smiled watching her run off. Water tribe stables. Naga you should have seen me today. The girl sat running into the stables, as a large white bundle uncurled itself showing a mix between a dog and a polar bear, as it padded over towards her tail wagging happy to see her friend. I kicked some serious firebender tail today, and I passed. Tenzin's going to be here in a few days, and I'm so excited. She said hugging her lifelong companion before laughing, as her friend licked her before putting its saddle on its back, shedding her padding now wearing a dark blue fur jacket. Wanna go get some exercise after being cooped up in here all day. She said getting a bark from her companion, as it allowed her to hop on its back like a horse before riding her through the grounds to the gate, as the guard looked down at her boredly. Mind opening the gate Naga has to get her exercise in for today. She said only to get a raised eyebrow from the man who stared at her skeptically. Come on. We won't go far besides where we can go. The next ship out of here is a couple days away you know. She said getting a shrug, as she made her point, as the two large doors slid open, letting the two charge out of the gate, letting the large creature get its exercise for the day until the sun began to set. Cora's family home. Standing outside with her mother, father, and Katara leaning against Naga, they could hear the voice of a child asking a barrage of questions, as a flying bison flew overhead before landing before them, when the one on the head of the massive creature said with his son gnawing on his head, Yes Iki at last we are finally here. On the saddle of the bison were two girls, and a pregnant woman, as many knew were their kids. His oldest daughter Janor, second oldest Iki, his only son Milo, and his loving wife Penma. Excited the two girls formed balls of air, as they rode down the sky bison's tail, as Tenzin held his wife down, before he bowed to Katara hello mother, I can't tell you how happy I am to see you. Coming closer he whispered so only she could hear please help me. Giving a silent laugh she held her son, as she grabbed Milo who started to flail around before he flew over her head, as she said, it's so good to see all of you. Dinora hugged her, and said grand grand it's so good to see you. I've been reading all of your adventures, but I have to ask what happened to Zuko's mom. 
As she was about to answer Ricky interrupted asking a series of questions without end making her sister give her a blank stare before she sighed as Katara walked over to hugging her. The baby's strong I can see another powerful airbender in your future, Hanu my dear Katara said, getting frantic look on her daughter-in-law's face. All I want is one child like myself a nice non-bender who doesn't blast wind in my face every 5 seconds she said, getting an amused look on Katara and the other's face, as they all turned to Milo who proved her point covering her face in snow from an airbending move. Shaking the snow out of her hair she said exasperated were Tenzin and his siblings like this. Laughing she said looking at Tenzin Kaya and Bumi were as children, but Tenzin was always just so serious. Proving her point, as he begged her to stop before he saw Kor leaning to the side from behind Katara, as she ran up allowing him to hug her. They all continued to talk until the concept of her training came up, showing he had a look of disappointment on his face, as Pema said, you're going to have to tell her sooner or later. Confused, she looked at Tenzin wondering what his wife meant until Katara spoke up. You're not staying are you? He sighed no we'll be here for the night, and then we must return to Republic City to handle some business. You could see the disappointment in her eyes, as Kor said what, but no you're supposed to move here to teach me how to airbend. Putting his hands on her shoulders he said, I'm so sorry Kor, but your training will have to wait for a little while longer. As they all headed into the dining room, Kor asked sitting across from Tenzin so how long will my training be postponed for? A week a month or two. Why do we have to wait? He said simply, it may be longer than that Kor I have a responsibility to Republic City I'm one of its leaders, and the city is in a bit of an unrest at the moment. Confused, she asked unrest. What's the problem? Conflicted he thought I don't want her getting involved. Tenzin what unrest? Kor asked again, as he sighed. That's a bit of tension between the non-benders, and the benders, that's why we can't stay because I'm needed in trying to calm the strife between the two he said, causing the girl to drop her head for a moment before it popped back up. Wait, if you can't stay, why don't I just come with you, and you can train me in your spare time? She proposed getting shot down instantly by one of the overseers from before. Sighing she said true, but with Tenzin going to Republic City, I don't have an airbending teacher to help me learn airbending, and there are no airbenders here. Interjecting Tenzin said I know how you feel core, but now just isn't the right time to begin your training I'm sorry. Aggravated she said walking out the door whatever. Water tribe peaks. Sitting at the top of the peaks core, and Naga watched Tenzin and his family fly off while Naga whined feeling her friend's disappointment. Sitting on her back horse started before her eyes shone with determination as she rode back home. Later that night. Sneaking out of her home, Kora walked to Naga's place, silently telling Naga to be quiet, as she placed the saddle on her back when she heard a voice from behind her nice night for an escape, isn't it Kora? Startled, she jumped to see Katara standing behind her with a smile before she explained her reasons, as the elderly woman smiled, saying I understand Kora. Ong's time has long since passed many of my friends have also reached their end at some point or another, much like my brother Sokka, and his wife Suki, as well. Putting her hands on Kora's shoulders she said, it's time for the newer generation to make their footnote in the world, and keep the balance in the world, and you can't do that by being cooped up like some caged animal here. Happy she hugged Katara, as she left telling her parents goodbye, as she used her water bending to form a tunnel under the wall, allowing the two to leave, as they found a cargo boat heading to Republic City the two snuck on, and stowed away sleeping for the long trip. Republic City the next day. Come on Kai what did I tell you about this sort of thing it isn't a good deal man Naruto said in his street clothes, placing his hands on the offender's shoulder, as he looked down to see a man a couple years his senior sigh. I know Naruto it's just with the jobs, as scarce, as they are, I don't really have much options to pick from you know. He said getting a sympathetic pat on the back, as Naruto sat next to him. I know, but you gotta think about your family I'm going to let you go if you promise me you'll quit this nonsense and find a job or even start one for that matter like a bookstore or something, Naruto said, getting an appreciative smile from him, as he nodded getting a nod in return, as he let him walk away. Son if you're done with the good guy thing I must let you know there is a disturbance reported near the shopping district, his mom's voice came in on a radio speaker in his ear, making him sigh. Oh I was just letting the guy go he didn't do anything too serious you know just some petty muggings, and that was barely, and, as for the disturbance I'm nowhere near there in the first place I'm in the storage district he said, getting an irritated groan on the other end. Granted, but I suggest you get the let out. We have a gang harassing the shop owner. She said getting a positive. But it I'm heading there now he said cutting the connection, as he used his metal bending to ride the lines overhead jumping to the next, as he made his way to the side of the disturbance. The public city shopping district. Well hello what are we here? Naruto said curiously, as he watched a dark-skinned girl wearing primary shades of blue handle a gang that he was assigned to handle with ease, albeit with a bit of recklessness involved, as she destroyed a bit of property in the process when the other metal bender police came in an attempt to arrest her. Though that is going to leave bruise on both Shang's face tomorrow, and his ego for a lifetime, Naruto said with a grin before running from the rooftops into a nearby alley. With Kor. Man what's with these guys? 
I stop the bad guys, and I'm the one who gets arrested. What kind of backward city is this? Kora thought riding on Naga looking for a place to hide, as she saw a hand in the shadows wave towards her making her guide Naga into the large alley, and hid away, as the police just passed by. My my that was a close one huh? Must have done something pretty bad to get so many metal benders on your tail, she heard making her jump, while Naga growled seeing a boy, as tall, as her wearing a pair of black pants, a grey sleeveless muscle shirt under a dark brown sleeveless vest, with a hut attached which she pulled down, causing the girl to blush, seeing his black hair come past his shoulders. As they gray and it glinted in the light with his fox-like expression, and his whiskers. Easy girl I'm not here to harm you he said cooing at the large creature, as he rubbed Naga's ears getting her to lay down instantly. See I mean you no harm he said opening his eyes, as Blue met Grey before getting a grin. Nice to meet you I'm Naruto, and judging by the looks of things you could use a friend at the moment, Naruto said with his hands behind his head, as Kor sighed. I'm Kor, and I just got off a cargo boat from the South Pole. If you don't mind my asking why are we in an alley anyway, you aren't a hoodlum are you? She asked suspiciously making him open an eye before chuckling, as that turned into full-blown laughter. Me a hoodlum. Sorry I may be a trickster, and a clown every now and again, but I am by no means a hoodlum he said laughing making her huff making him calm down. Sorry, but what was with those guys? I didn't do anything wrong, but help those people, and I'm the one who gets arrested. She asked getting a sigh. Yeah well you also caused a bit of property damage in the process he said, making her deflate a bit remembering that. And then there's the fact you kicked an officer in the face, I doubt he's going to be too thrilled about that one he added, making her collapse to her knees, until Naruto patted her on the shoulder. But it's fine you're with your own personal tour guide, and I'll show you all the ins and outs, as well as the dose and dots of Republic City he said, with his hand out for her to grab, as he pulled her up allowing her to stand. But what about the police? She asked getting on Naga, as Naruto walked out of the alley only getting a grin. Still grinning he said oh don't worry they won't mess with me if they know what's good for them. Come on it's still early, and I bet you two ladies are pretty hungry, and I know the perfect place for a quick fulfilling meal. Looking down at Naga who had a pleading look on her face she relented saying led the way then Naruto. They walked out of the alley next to Naruto who put his hood back on. Time skip. To be honest, Kora was surprised that everyone in Republic City seemed to have a strong love for Naruto from the civilians to the benders, despite the small factions. And to be honest she couldn't blame them for liking him. What wasn't there to like? He was nice, caring, social, and helpful, as well, and to top it off he was an earthbender, although he didn't really look the part, as some were overly musk, but tenant you have a target in your sight shall we deal with her? He heard in his earpiece making him TSK at the interruption. Quickly he whispered, as to not raise suspicion it's fine go about your business I have it under control here. What is under control? Kora asked riding Naga, as she looked over seeing Naruto having an alarmed look on his face. Though nothing I was saying the police sure have things under control here. So Kora I gotta ask what else was it you wanted to do? He asked getting a questioning look from the girl, as she shrugged. Well I doubt he's here yet so wherever you want to go is cool I suppose she said getting a grin in exchange, as he nodded. Well I have a bit of business to handle you could say, and being in the presence of a pretty woman would make the day perfect, Naruto said, getting a blush from the girl, as she sputtered. Well if that's what you want fine I suppose she said trying to control her stutter, as she followed him. After a few moments of silence she asked, so Naruto, what made you come to Republic City? Yawning he said stretching I didn't really choose to come here so much, as I was born, and raised here. I know every nook and cranny like the back of my hand, as well as all the shortcuts. Confused, she asked, why do you know all of that? Shrugging he said well with how big Republic City is it's easy to get lost or wind up in the more shady parts of it, so you gotta know how to get somewhere fast, and the best way to get there. That's good I guess she said confused until they came to a stop in front of the metal bending police headquarters. Confusion could be seen on Kora's face, as she dismounted off of Naga who sat on her haunches in confusion, as well, until she saw Naruto's hand extended which she took, and shook with a closed-eyed smile. Thanks Kora, and no hard feelings alright. He said much to her confusion until she heard a click making her look at her hands to see a pair of metal cuffs on her hands, while Naga's paws were encased in earth much to her shock, as her feet were soon encased, as well. Naruto, what's the big idea? She said alarmed before she saw him holding a badge, as other metal benders soon surrounded them, as she read the ID on it. Lieutenant Naruto Bayfron. The Republic City's metal bending police force she read much to her shock, as the picture had the same face, as Naruto's, but this one lacked the carefree expression or enjoyment she experienced today, as she almost flinched from the cold expression the photo held. Sorry to trick you like this core, but you did assault an officer of the law you have to at least answer to that avatar or not he said, as she sighed holding her head down, until he put his hand on her shoulder making her look at him. Why did you trick me? She asked angrily getting a sad expression in return. 
Trust me when I say if I had the choice I wouldn't have, but it is my job, as a member of the force to uphold the law I did enjoy hanging out, though he said with a smile at the end, which she kinda enjoyed seeing he was at least apologetic about all this. Take Naga to the animal pen until Korra can pick her up, you got that Naruto said to one of the officers, only to get a snort before Naruto used his earth bending to make him slide across the floor, till he was nose to nose with Naruto. I'm sorry, what was that? I could have sworn I heard a snort come from you. Are you a pig all of a sudden? Naruto asked with a dangerous undertone making him advert his gaze. And no sir, sorry sir, I'll get to that this instant. He said quickly grabbing Naga's reins, as he ran off with the polar bear dog. What was that about? Korra asked, as she was led through the building, as he sighed. Some people here on the force aren't too keen on me being a lieutenant, and after my mom steps down chief of the force, and are quite vocal about that they feel that I'm receiving special attention being the chief's son, so they feel like I don't deserve to wear the uniform he said with a tired sigh, as she looked at the others, and back at him. Why aren't you wearing the uniform? She asked getting a chuckle from him. Would you believe this was my day off? He said making her laugh from the southern water tribe girl. But Seelin said, as she paced in front of Kor, who had her hands still bound by the metal cuffs. Multiple counts of destruction of private and city property. Not to mention evading arrest which we'll overlook, as Naruto brought you in, but regardless you seem to be in a serious mess of trouble, Lin said, slamming her hand on the table looking Kor in the eye. But there were some thugs harassing those shopkeepers I couldn't just she started before Lin cut her off. You should have called for the police, and stayed out of the way Lin said getting protests from the water tribe girl. I couldn't just sit by, and do nothing. It's my duty to help people I'm the avatar you see she said getting an appraising look from Lin. I'm more than aware of who you are. The report the shopkeepers have on you using water, fire, and earth bending, makes that glaringly obvious, and while your avatar title might impress others, I'm going to tell you this now it doesn't impress me she said narrowing her eyes. Fine then let me talk to whoever's in charge. I want to talk to Naruto's mother Kora said getting a grin from Lin. You're talking to her, her name is Lin Beifong. Chief Lin Beifong head of the metal bending police force, Lin said making Kora raise an eyebrow, before she thought it over before a light bulb went off in her head. Wait, Beifong. You're Toph's daughter, and that makes Naruto her grandson, she said getting a questioning look, followed by a nod from the leader. Then why are you treating me like a criminal avatar on, and your mom were friends they saved the world together, Kora said getting a sigh from Lin. Exactly that it's ancient history, and it has nothing to do with the mess you're in now she said standing from her seat. You can't just walk in my town, and dole out vigilante justice like you own the place Lin continued when the window opened to show a man with a footprint on his face, giving Kora a dark look all the while. Chief Beifong. Councilman Tenzin is here he said getting a sigh from Lin. Let him and Lin said getting a nod from the man, as the window closed before Tenzin walked in with a small glare on his face. Sorry Tenzin, I got a little sidetracked on my way to see you Kora said sheepishly, as he took a deep breath before turning to Lin. When you're looking radiant, as usual he said getting a blank expression from Lin. Cut the garbage Tenzin, why is the avatar in Republic City when she should be back in the South Pole with you learning airbending? She asked getting a sigh. My relocation was delayed. The avatar on the other hand will be heading back to the South Pole immediately, where she will stay put until I come, and train her he said getting protests from Korra before he cut her off. If you would be so kind Lin, and drop the charges on Korra I, and Naruto he started before getting a glare from Lin. Don't involve my son. Lin growled getting a single eye to open. Well Naruto, and I take full responsibility for her actions, and cover all the damages he said ignoring the deep growl coming from Lin's chest before relenting. Fine get her out of my sight, and out of my city Lin said getting a nod from Tenzin. It was a pleasure Lin he said before he was pushed against the metal wall by Lin being held by his robes. And if you ever pull something like this with my son, and use him for whatever goes on in that bald head of yours, I will personally see to it that the council is missing a member. And you know I am more than capable of doing so with no chance of me being caught, Lin threatened getting a hesitant nod, as he and Kor were loud out. Animal stables. Tenzin please don't send me back Kor begged while Tenzin ignored her. You blatantly disregarded my wishes, and the order of the white lotus he said getting a sigh from the waterbender. But Katara agreed with me on my choice of coming here, saying my destiny is here in Republic City she said, getting a heated glare from Tenzin. Don't bring my mother into this. He said when he heard a laugh from the stables to see Naruto sitting with Naga rubbing her head. Man good one cord the last time I saw his face get that red was when me, and his son Milo, dyed all of his ropes hot pink good times Naruto said, as he got up with Naga, allowing the large dog to stand, as he guided her out of the stable. Tenzin, let's be honest with what's going on in Republic City. I hold zero doubt that you will be able to teach Kora airbending, especially when a threat can come up at any moment, and the sooner she learns airbending, the sooner she can be prepared for whatever comes her way. Besides, do you really want to explain to Granny Katara why you sent this innocent face home? Naruto said pointing to Kora who was giving him a look that would make a thousand puppies in a box seem ugly by comparison. 
He's right, Tenzin me being cooped up in the South Pole and hidden away from the world won't help me become a better avatar. I saw a lot of the city today, and it's completely out of whack. I get why you need to stay. Republic City needs you, and it needs me too she said, making Naruto stare at her. You haven't the slightest idea on how right you are Naruto thought with a sigh before clapping his hands. Come on Tenzin let's head to the temple mom already messaged me, and dick move involving me. But since I'm the only friend Kora here has in Republic City, I wouldn't mind helping her Naruto said walking away with his arm around Kora's shoulder. Not getting a word in, he followed the three, as Kora said so that was your mom. Getting a naughty said I hope you can look past her no-nonsense demeanor, but she's not one to take flack from anyone when the town is concerned, but she's nice when you get to know her he said getting a scoff from Kor. No offense Naruto, but that woman is a hard ass she said getting a chuckle from him, as he nodded. Yeah she's the no-nonsense type. I mean I am too, but it took practice to be like that while well, she's a natural at it. But in all honesty she's not that bad once you learn about her, and some of her hobbies, form a bond with her Naruto said, as they made their way towards the ship to the air temple island. So your mom isn't as hard shelled as everyone thinks she is. Tenzin said getting a snort from Naruto. Only to people who get on her nerves easily and aggravate her or hit one of her bad spots. Trust me I've seen several people get her mad and several end up in the hospital Naruto said as he leaned on the railing. So Naruto, why are you coming with us? She asked making Naruto jab a thumb at Tenzin. Uncle Twinkle Toes here made the agreement without me and how I share joint responsibility for things you do here in Republic City. I you get into trouble not only does Tenzin get in trouble, I get in more trouble than both of you combined he explained, making the waterbender raise an eyebrow. To be blunt he is a councilman the law works on his behalf. I'm a simple police officer, and although the people prefer me over the council since I give a damn about their problems, and listen while trying to help. But, as I was saying you do something it's simple to say 75% of the blame will fall on me, while 15% falls on you, and 10% on Tenzin he said, stretching seeing a large statue of Ong holding his glider, that gave off a golden glow by the setting sun. Reaching the shore of the island Naruto saw Penma, and her three children Iki, Milo, and Jinora standing at the pier, while Jinora's eyes brightened seeing him, as he waved at her, causing a blush to form on her cheeks. Docking Naruto was mowed down by Iki, and Milo made him chuckle, while Jinora stood back with a blush on her cheeks, before he was let up saying aw, I don't get a hug from Jinora. I honestly think I might cry Penma. Looking down at her daughter Penma said my I would've thought you like Naruto guests the next time Tenzin, and I go out for something, and need somebody to look after you all I might have to get someone else. Going wide-eyed Jinora created a gust of wind launching her towards Naruto who caught her, as she wrapped her arms around his waist, despite having difficulty squeezing tightly getting a chuckle from Naruto, as he patted her head. Leaning near Pima and Tenzin, Kora asked, how does Naruto know you guys? We've been friends with his mom and him since he was born, and when we were kids, same for Tenzin's brother, sister, and Katar. As for our kids there were times when we were busy nobody could watch them so Naruto would look out for them, as kids sort of like a babysitter or a big brother Pen explained, as she watched Jinora's blush deepen, as she tightened her grip. Are you coming to live with us on the island Naruto? Why is Kor with you? Why are you giving dad a glare? Did he do something wrong? Iki asked in a single breath getting a chuckle from Naruto who was used to her long string of questions. In that order Iki. Yes, I will be staying here for a while. The reason Kora is with me is because she is under my watch due to some events that would be too long to explain at that moment. I'm giving your dad a glare because it has to do with why Kora and I are here which would be connected with your fifth question anything else. Naruto asked making the little girl remain silent before shaking her head getting a chuckle from Naruto. But now isn't it just a bit late for you three to be up this late? Naruto said with a raised eyebrow getting a groan from Miki and Milo while Jinora pouted. Please Naruto, I'm not a kid. I'm only a few years younger than you you know. Jinora said getting a chuckle from Naruto. That may be true, but even needs her rest, as a big girl to grow. You don't think your mom or Kora got to be as tall or as beautiful by staying up late did you? Naruto asked getting a blush from the two while she nodded running off to bed with her siblings, leaving Naruto and the others. You know Kora after Grandpa Twinkle Toes died the city started to fall out of balance. Tenzin may have tried his best to keep things in check, but by putting your training on hold, he was trying to keep Ong's legacy going when to be honest you are his legacy. Tomorrow you two will begin air bending training, and we can work on earth and water bending, Naruto said getting a nod before she remembered what he said. My room is still where it was right, Penma. He asked getting a nod from her, as he hugged her before following the three to the temple. What did he mean? I already have earth and water mastered. Kora said getting a chuckle from Tenzin. Naruto may not look like it, but he's actually the world's strongest earth and water bender. He got his skill as an earth bender from Toph and Lin, while he got his tremendous skill in water bending from his late father. 
actually my sister and his grandmother figures his control over those two elements are as great as your own when you're in your avatar state in your past life. If father was alive, he just might agree with us, Tenzin said, making Chorus stare at him in curiosity. Guess who are you, Naruto? She thought before following Penma to the room she would be having during her stay at the temple. The next morning, the loud chorus of cheers and whistles could be heard, as Chorus stood before all of Republic City with a microphone in hand, while cameras flashed while Naruto and Lin stood on either side of her in their police uniforms. Tapping the microphone she said hello I'm Kora your new avatar. As soon as those words left her lips the journalists fired off a barrage of questions causing her to get flustered before Naruto stepped in, as he said people one at a time avatar Kora will field any and all questions you may have, but you must be patient and wait for your chance to speak. Giving him an appreciative nod for helping he nodded in return, as she pointed to the first who said, Does this mean you are permanently staying here in Republic City? As the group heard her answer the first question she heard started to become overwhelmed, as she said honestly, I don't have a plan exactly you see I'm still in training, but... Pausing for a moment she said seriously after fumbling on the first part of her sentence, as she said look, all I know is that Avatar Ong meant for this city to be the center of peace and balance of the world. In the small few hours I've been in the city I've heard from many of you about how benders are oppressing the non-benders, and how many groups Chief and Lieutenant Bei Fong among others included, have been trying to fix the growing crack in that relationship. I want to believe we can make Ong's dream a reality, and I know that with enough effort and time it will come true. I look forward to serving you all. Thank you Republic City. Chorus said making the crowd cheer. That will be all for today thank you all for your time Naruto said seriously, as he and Lin lead Kora out of the crowd, unaware of the threat that was listening. The next day. And in the final round the buzzard wasps won the final round with a decisive knockout. Hey, can we go to the arena tonight? Maybe check out a few pro bending matches, Kora asked sitting at the group breakfast table, while Kora read the sports section, while Tenzin gave a huff. That sport is a mockery of the noble tradition of bending he said getting a sigh from Kora. Please. I've dreamed of seeing a pro bending match since I was a kid, and now I'm only a fairy right away from the arena, Kora said, getting a blank expression from Tenzin. You aren't here to watch some drivel. You're here to complete your avatar training so for the time being I want you to remain on the island, he ordered getting a sigh from Kora before she perked up. Speaking of training, where's Naruto? He said he would be training me in my earth, and water bending she said getting a groan from the doorway, making everyone turn to see set black and grey haired teen stretching wearing a pair of brown shorts with black bandages around the soles of his feet. And hands with the emerald green sleeveless muscle shirt with his birthmark present with his hair done in a low ponytail, drawing a blush on her cheeks. I'm here. I've been outside of my wake up schedule for so long I gotta get back in the swing of things. Anyways Kora I don't honestly agree with Tenzin's view on pro bending. I mean it's not like back when Ong was trying to stop Azai and everyone was practicing bending and fighting. Groups are split into teams each with a bender that can use one element save for air, since there are only four air benders in the world yourself excluded. I like it to see how others use their bending and what style they know, Naruto said joining them at the table eating a bowl of rice. It's despicable Tenzin said, getting an eye roll from Naruto and Kora, before Tenzin got up walking out being followed by Kora and Naruto. 15 minutes later. How come Naruto doesn't have to wear these robes? Kora asked wearing similar clothing to Tenzin and his children, while Naruto chuckled seeing the uniform while slightly baggy on her, still clung to her curves. Because I'm not an airbender my dear if I was, this would be a totally different argument altogether where I'd say it's because I prefer my non-restrictive clothing over the flowy fabric you're wearing. I like to feel like I'm wearing something Naruto said, as he stretched all the while Kora stared at his chiseled body, and the birthmark on his arm. So Kora my mother told me you were never able to airbend before. Tenzin said ignoring Naruto's comment while snapping Kora out of her thoughts. Yeah, but I don't know why. I've had an easier time with the others than I did with this one. I mean, as a girl of the North Pole I would think my difficult element would be fire since they clash. Why is it that I can't do airbending? Kora said making Naruto think. Well Ong had a difficulty with earth bending because it contradicted everything the airbenders represented freedom. With earth a bender must be rooted and firm like the earth immovable Naruto said, getting a nod from Tenzin, who rolled down Kora's sleeves. Come it's time for the first lesson Tenzin said, as he lead Kora and Naruto to the top of the long path, as they saw several large wooden panels on poles with Iki, Jinora, and Milo standing nearby. This Kora is a time-honored tool that teaches the most fundamental aspect of airbending. Jinora how about you explain for her Tenzin said getting a nod from her eldest daughter who walked towards the device. The goal is to weave your way through the gates and to make it to other side without touching them she explained getting a pad on the head from Naruto making her beam. That doesn't sound too difficult Kora said feeling confident before Iki burst her water bending bubble. Jinora forgot to mention you have to make it through while the gates are spinning she said as Tenzin created a large gust of wind causing the gates to spin in various directions making her gulp. The key is to be like the leaf. 
to flow with the movements of the gate Janora cares to demonstrate. Tenzin asked getting a nod, as she walked forward dancing through the gates elegantly, as she moved never touching the gates once making Naruto clap. Airbending is all about spiral movements. When you meet resistance you must be able to switch directions at a moment's notice, Tenzin explained when Janora created another gust of wind, making them spin in the opposite direction. Taking a breath course set building her confidence, as she ran forward hitting the first gate, causing her to get knocked around like a ball coming back out, where she started making her growl before running back in. Seeing this Naruto thought with a wince wow this looks so familiar it's scary. That one looks like it's going to bruise. The more the kids talked the more it got at Korra before she started to snort smoke Naruto grabbed hold of her pulling her back. Calm down Korra instead of air bending you're going to turn the gates into kindling with how you're going. Here maybe if you saw it from the perspective of someone who isn't a bored air bender might help Naruto said as he walked forward. It was an immense contrast to how Korra acted as Naruto held his eyes closed as he danced through the gates before sliding out with ease before walking back to Korra who was dumbfounded. Ayu how she said getting a chuckle from Naruto as he patted her shoulder. Trust me Korra, it wasn't easy. I had to carve all of those myself after destroying them the first couple dozen times I tried learning how. You have to remain calm and feel the air. If you control the wind it will push you back, if you fight the storm it will tear you apart. The air isn't something you force like the other elements, with air you guided like water Naruto said, getting a nod from Tenzin. Now instead of getting angry how about we got to the shores, and you show me just what the white lotus masters of water and earth taught you, Naruto said guiding her to the shores getting a nod. We'll be back Tenzin not like we can leave the ship won't be back for another two days, and I doubt Naga would want to carry two teenagers back to land Naruto said, as he lead Kor. At the shores. Now Kor I know what you may think that the white lotus masters of earth and water are perfect, but I can assure you their styles are far from it, Naruto said, as he demonstrated before closing his eyes, making the ground shake when a large ring of earth formed around him, as he jumped along the wheel to touch the ground, with his feet planted firmly on it before moving around. Punching forward he made the wheel shatter, as it fired a barrage of sharp jagged rocks at the sea, before stomping his foot again making a platform rise, before kicking twice making several thin sharp blades of earth fly, chopping down a tree nearby. Whoa. Korra said amazed getting a grin from Naruto before he exhaled, and extended his arms when they were covered by large whips of water, they covered his arms up to his shoulders, as they extended past his hands. Like earth water is a well-known element, and with the white lotus only teaching one style people can learn to counter it. You can be predictable with your opponent because they know every play in your book he said, as the two whips got thin near the end, as Korra heard a slight vibrating sound when he stomped his foot before spinning bringing the whips to the slab. As it was chopped down in chunks with him now using claws. As Tenzin is your airbending master I will be your earth and water bending master. I will teach you what I know, but do know that I won't hold back because my grandma was friends with you in your past life. Like mom said some time ago that's the past, and we're in the present we may be friends, but I won't coddle you while training he said, getting a nod from Kor, seeing that same cold look in his eyes, as his photo did making him grin. I understand Shifu Naruto she said getting an appraising look from him. Let's see if you do Kor, but before you know about bending you must understand yourself. After all a bender's skill is only as good as the shape they keep themselves in he said making her raise an eyebrow before she shivered seeing his fangs. Later that evening. Oh my body hurts, Kor moaned getting a chuckle from Naruto, as he leaned down holding a bottle of water. Oh don't be a baby Kor, that was the light stuff, and we'll start that way every morning before training, and, as it cooled down after training. Trust me you haven't seen the things I put myself through, as a child, if I wasn't in school to be a police officer he said sitting on the cold stone floor with Kor. Hey Naruto why did you want to be an officer? I mean you don't strike me, as the type to be officer you're far too easy going, Kor asked getting a sigh from Naruto. I guess it's because it's in my blood. My dad despite not being an earthbender was one to help people, and my mom and grandma were police officers. As for my own reasons, it happened when I was a kid. The council refused to help an orphanage that was in horrendous conditions. It barely passed the law to stand he said, making Kor gasp. It tore at me because many of us are fortunate that we have warm beds and warm meals in our stomachs every day, but them. So I told everyone to evacuate the building with the beds and things of importance and tore it down he said, making Kor look at him. After that I created a large orphanage that held more than enough room for every child to have their own space, and I even worked on the plumbing and heating during the winter, even came to cook a few meals for them. As I did this the council came demanding I stop, and you know what I told them. He asked getting a shake of the head from Kor. I told them that it's the council and the vendor's job to help the people of Republic City and to bring unity between all groups. If they had a problem with it then they could just go fuck themselves I was just a kid at the time and barely older than the children in the orphanage at the time. 
I did what I set my mind to, and made the place better for the children, and even now, as I pass by the orphanage on my way to work, I see those children's smiling face, and I know I helped in some way to show that someone gives a damn. He finished getting a wide-eyed look from Kor, before the two returned to silence. Hey Naruto do you think I'm even cut out to be an airbender? I mean everything else I've mastered in little to no time, but air. Nothing, I can't even get a breeze she said getting a chuckle from Naruto. The public city wasn't created in a day, Kor. If it's worth learning or doing it's worth effort, and difficulty be it bending or the everyday problems of life. I know you can do it, just give it time he said getting a nod before they heard a radio nearby, making them see the white lotus sitting around a radio, making them get up jump to the roof above the lotus to listen better. Ladies and gentlemen I'm coming to you live from Republic City's Pro Bending Arena, where tonight the best in the world continue on a quest for a spot in the upcoming championship tournament they heard over the radio, making them grin leaning closer. Grab your kids, and grab your snacks because this next match is going to be a dozy they heard, as the two stared at the arena from the roof, while Naruto dived into his pocket, pulling out snacks offering Kor some, as the two enjoyed the match. This Mako's got Moxie, and advances firing two quick shots. Yumo is hammered back to zone 3. The clock is winding down can Yumo hold on, as he teeters on the edge of the ring. Now the announcer commented bringing Naruto, and Kor on the edge of suspense, listening to the play by play when the radio was disconnected, making the two teens gain a look of despair, while Naruto wailed in despair. Why spears why must you torture me? Naruto cried pounding his fist on the roof, making the white lotus to jump at the voice above them. Kor, Naruto, come down here now. Tenzin said making the two sigh, as the water and earthbenders grabbed the edge of the roof, flipped inside standing in front of the irate airbender, and alarmed white lotus members. Come one Tenzin you shut it off at the best part. Oh man if I had money on that game oh the things I would do to you Tenzin. Naruto growled, as water formed around him, as his eye twitched in irritation. What would your mother say if she knew you gambled with Naruto? Tenzin said getting a snort from the black and gray haired teen. Please Tenzin, who do you think taught me? Scratch that granny taught me, but mom told me not to make a habit of it which I don't. I only do so when I know I'm going to win which by the way you three he said holding his hand out making them sigh, as they each dropped a couple dozen gold and silver pieces each which Naruto promptly pocketed before seeing Kor and Tenzin stare at him. As the three guards left. What? He said after a moment of silence before he shrugged stretching with a yawn, feeling his bones pop. I thought I made myself clear I don't want you listening to this distracting nonsense, Tenzin said getting a groan from Naruto. Tenzin, it's their radio. Besides it takes her mind off the difficulty she's facing with her airbending, you don't want her to be stressed out while trying to airbend, and end up doing what I did when I got frustrated. Do you? Naruto said getting a shiver before Tenzin glared at him. You're also her teacher you shouldn't be supporting her behavior, and take training seriously, Tenzin said to Naruto who yawned. What do you want me to do blindfold her, and place her at the end of a ridiculously steep ramp I earth bent, and put it equally, as ridiculously large boulder at the top, and make her earth bend it out of the way until it's second nature like granny did years ago. She has her own way of learning just like your children, your sister, and aunt did. You aren't going to look me in the eye, and say that you, and your own sister, and aunt Kaya, did what you're trying to do to train in bending. Naruto said folding his arms across his chest while Tenzin fumbled with his words. Plus if we're going to split hairs you said she couldn't watch a match, you never said squat about listening to a match Naruto said getting a growl from Tenzin. Shouldn't you be in bed right now? Tenzin said storming off getting an eye roll from Naruto, as the two headed to their rooms. The next morning. Standing in the pagoda watching the four airbender, and Kor meditate Naruto laid across the railing before she looked towards Naruto who shrugged, as she said, I think I might be doing this wrong. There's nothing to do Kor just let your mind and your spirit be free, as air is the element of freedom you must embrace it, Tenzin said getting a snort from Naruto. Irony it is purest form since unlike the wind you try to control Kor's every movement outside of training, Naruto said, getting a twitch of the eyebrow from Tenzin. I do not he said getting a snort from the two teens. He tried to tell her how to bathe and where to focus that's just going beyond control freak Naruto said, as he scratched his head. Ignoring that just look at Milo he's able to do it, Tenzin said, making the two stare at the boy who was drooling with a snot bubble. I think he's relaxing just a bit too much by the looks of it, Naruto said watching the boy snore. Lakor I know you're frustrated, but these teachings will take hold over time, and click into place, Tenzin said, closing his eyes like Kor did, as well before she exhaled standing. Yeah I'm going to go stretch my legs, Kor said with Naruto shaking his head following her. Later that evening. Alright almost their core thought sneaking past the white lotus after leaving her room standing at the edge of a cliff. Just where do you think you're going so late? She heard while she was in mid jump to flail her arms trying to keep her balance before Naruto grabbed her collar and pulled back turning her to see Naruto with his arms crossed and eyebrows. Going for a swim. She said while Naruto kept his suspicious expression before she sighed. 
Fine I'm going to the arena to watch a game I can't stand being on this island much longer before I end up losing my mind just meditating she said getting a nod from Naruto. I won't argue with that one. Come on if we're lucky we can catch a match Naruto said diving with Korra following him. Thanks for watching my video, leave a like if you enjoyed my video, and also do consider subscribing to my channel for more awesome content. See you next time, till then sayonara.